It's 8.27 morning to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Ellie. Now, England and Wales are set to become some of the first countries to recognise children born as a result of rape as victims of a crime. Yeah, amendments to the Victims' Bill will ensure these children are entitled to support from the police and the courts throughout their lives. And that's a landmark decision from the government. Well, here to discuss the kind of provisions we could see put in place is crime and policing commentator Danny Shaw. Good morning to you, Danny. And this is really significant, isn't it? Morning, Talk Ellie. Us... Morning. Talk us through the changes and what this will mean for, for victims, as they're now deemed. Well, this is a, a historic change. You're quite right to say that. Uh, an amendment that the Ministry of Justice has put forward to the Victims' Bill um, I expect that it will be passed by Parliament and that most people would agree with it. Um, and it will mean that any child who is conceived uh, through rape will be officially classed as a victim and will be entitled to receive the sorts of services that other victims of crime uh, can get. So that could be support for emotional distress, could be support for mental health problems that, uh, that they're having. Um, it could be support for depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. Um, feelings that may emerge later on in life as that individual gets older, um, a sense that they don't belong. Um, it, it's an incredibly difficult situation uh, for people uh, who have been conceived as a result of rape to be in. Um, some people manage to sort of get on with their lives, not an issue. Um, for others, uh, they're extremely traumatised and find it very difficult to, to fit in. Um, so I think this is an amendment I think that most people would support. Well, all of this seems to suggest that these children are then told uh, uh, what their heritage is in that sense, um, which begs the question, do, do we think that's, that's right? I, mean, I know with, as, with adopted children, for example, it's encouraged that they are told that they are adopted and then obviously they have that to process. Um, it, it seems a, mu a much more difficult thing to tell a child that their father was a rapist. Yeah, and uh, this, is, this is an individual thing. The state isn't saying what you should do or how you should go about it. It's saying the support is there uh, automatically if you're in this situation. It's estimated, and this is an estimate that's been produced uh, by campaign groups, that there could be as many as 3,000 people a year in this situation. Uh, that sort of statistic is taken from uh, estimates of the number of, of rape victims in the country and then the number of those uh, who will fall pregnant as a result, of course, minus those who will have a termination. Um, so that's a rough estimate, which is a, a, an extraordinarily high number. And I think what you've got to remember is this, this isn't something that the government sort of just invented. It, it's come about because of pressure uh, from a woman uh, who at uh, 13, who was, uh, whose, whose mother was raped at the age of 13 in the 1970s. Uh, she had to campaign for justice. Uh, the child, uh, as she got older, campaigned for justice, and she got justice in 2021 uh, when the rapist Carvel Bennett, who was then 74, was jailed um, because uh, the, the, the child, who was, was then a woman, provided DNA evidence uh, to sort of link him to the crime. And this is where it's key. So it's not just about support, but it's also about the victim saying, look, I was born as a result of rape. Use my DNA to try and find out who the rapist is. So that there's a real link here in terms of evidence that could help prove a court case. And How I think that... it's very important to remember that. It's being, that's why it's called Daisy's Law, because it's after the woman Daisy, uh, whose mother was raped when she was 13. But how does that work? I mean, that's Im impressive, but how does that work? I mean, because obviously that person is not going to be classed as a victim, are they? They're not going to get that support as a victim until there's been a conviction, will they? No, I don't think that that's how it works. I mean, I think how it will work is if um, them, the person's mother says she was raped and therefore her child uh, is a victim um, because of that. I think you're right, Stephen, though, to point out there is a question, how do you actually show to the authorities that's the case? And I think the question that will be asked is, will that lead to bogus claims? Will that lead to people coming forward who want support from the state or who want to take 
um, an action out of, against someone for malicious reasons who claim that they were born through rape. And I think that is a question that I think, you know, I, I think the government will have to answer as this bill goes through the House of Commons. It may be that there are safeguards built in to ensure that this measure, which is being introduced for the best of reasons, isn't abused. OK, Danny, really good to talk to you. Thanks for talking us through that. Appreciate it.